Hello again. Um, today seems to be the day that I do my Facebook lives. So this is my third one for today. But this one is not a book giveaway. This one is pertaining to something that has been in my spirit all day. And the Holy Ghost has asked that I just come on here and do this brief review of the importance of the whole armor of God. I've seen, again, through posts and questions asked, um, you know, a lot of people are wondering, oops, hold on, getting feedback here, I'm using two cameras. I've seen, again, posts and questions asked, using two, there you go, using two computers here. Um, yeah, so I put my book, Be Free, and spirit spouses up because um, <laughs> hi David um, I'm going to be taking um, an excerpt from that book which addresses the importance of the armor of God okay um, and in the title you can see the scripture is being taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18. And I just want to start out by saying to all of you who are going through trials and tests and you fasted and you've prayed and you're still getting attacked, um, whether it's in the daytime or in your dreams, understand I know you've heard it before, but maybe you'll really hear it this time. Hi, everybody. I can actually see your comments this time. I'm working with two computers here. So um, you, you can't fight spiritual things, spiritual battles physically, right? We, can we agree on that? Okay. So when you're having these manifestations things that are actually happening to you in the physical, understand they originated in the spiritual world. And through your agreement, whether you knew about it or not, or through the agreement of someone in your bloodline, you are now faced with the manifestation, the reality of these things. So going around and raising sand, as they say, making a fuss, um, just saying anything that comes to your head or getting angry and going after the individual or the thing or the circumstance head on in a physical matter is not going to help. It's only going to frustrate you more, pull you more away from God because now doubt is setting in and faith is exiting your life, your heart, your mind. And you are going to become more and more entangled, more and more entrenched in the situation. And there's not going to be a resolution. And you say, okay, well, how do I deal with this? Well, when we go to war, those of you who are soldiers, and I'm not one, so I can't say we, but physically when soldiers go to war, they gear up, they put on their armor, whether it be their fatigues, they got all their supplies, their weaponry, they check, double check, and those who carry firearms, knives, and whatever, they always check their equipment before they go out to war, okay? They always, always check their equipment before they go out to war. They're cleaning their, their knives. They're taking their firearms apart and cleaning out all the pieces. So how does that relate to us in the physical? Well, we need to take our heart and our mind apart, clean out all the pieces through prayer and fasting before we go and engage in spiritual warfare. But the most important part before we go out and deal with things on a spiritual level is to put on our armor, to put on our fatigues, our helmet, you know, put on that breastplate pick up our sword, make sure we've got on the belt, 
you know, to keep our pants up, right? We got to have on the proper footwear. We got to put on the right shoes. So what am I saying? You're going out there in flip-flop sandals, see-through clothing. You really ain't protected from the elements. You ain't got on no breastplate to cover your vital organs, right? You got on a baseball cap, or maybe you don't even have on a hat, so you got no helmet to protect your head and your brain. You certainly don't have a sword, okay? You're probably out there um, fighting with, let's say, bubble gum, candy. That's not going to have an effect. And I'm, I'm making this analogy because I want this to really sink in to show you you're going to fight so ill-equipped. So what do you do? You got to prey on because we're dealing with spiritual things. So you can't go physically pick up some armor. It's not going to work. Remember, we can't fight spiritual things with physical things, right? You got to prey on the whole armor of God. But we can find that in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. So if you have your Bibles, or if some of you are so used to me just copying and pasting it in the comments, which I will do now, um, we're going to go through this really quick. And this, again, is just an impromptu, this is an impromptu um, video. Holy Spirit was like, you're not done for the day. I thought I was done. I was about to go chill. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to get in my big chair and go and relax my one day a week. But he's like, no, somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs this because while you're out there relaxing, somebody's going through something and they need resource now, right? So if you haven't shared, please share this video because somebody, I guarantee, on your timeline, some friend of yours here on social media, they need this information. So Ephesians 6. 10 through 18 says, and I'm reading through the, from the King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay, so let's just break that there. Finally, finally, the word finally, usually you say finally as this is the last important nugget. This is the last important piece to the puzzle, okay? Be strong in the Lord, you know, trust in the Lord and the power of his might, not by our power, by our might, do we win anything in the spirit realm, but it is only through the Lord Jesus Christ's power and might, right? We need to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil, stand against the wiles of the devil the wiles of the devil. The devil has tricks, okay? He has strategy. He's a great strategist, right? He's been doing this for a very long time. I mean, think about it. For him to, to have taken a third of the angels from heaven, he had to have a plan, right? He just didn't think one glorious day, okay, I'm going to round up my buddies and we're going to take heaven. We're going to take on God, the creator. Only a fool would try to do something like that, ill-equipped and ill-prepared. So trust and believe when I say that Satan is a strategist. And you coming out there ill-equipped to fight him in his territory because... He understands spiritual things, you're bound to fail. So that's why you gotta put on the whole armor of God to stand against his tricks. You know, people would say, Well, I I pray and I fast and you know, I tithe and I do good things, I have a good and pure heart and all that. Bible says none is righteous. We're all just as filthy rags. So even in when you think you're you're pure of heart and you're you're good and, and clean, look, being good ain't gonna get you into heaven. 
being good ain't going to get you sa sa saved. It's not going to bring salvation. Because least that any man should boast that he did anything so to get himself saved and whatnot. No, nah, no. Nah. It's going to take your faith and trust in Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. Understanding that you can't do this alone. But he's given us the equipment to do this. And it amazes me that so many are still suffering purely because they just won't study. I'm not telling you to go study 15 hours a day. I'm not telling you to study all the waking hours of your life. I'm not telling you that. But I am saying to those who really, really want to understand this world's system, physical and spiritual, you have to study. Okay? And so my second computer, yeah, it just died on me. But that's okay. We're going to keep going. So you have to study. Right? And so... I'm going to help you today by giving you a cheat and telling you when you get ready to go out and do physical, I should say spiritual warfare, you got to pray on the whole armor of God, right? So we're taking it from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Come on, computer. And let's see if I can get on my phone. I can't see your comments right now. But um, somebody had sent a message to me about wanting to stop bad dreams. You probably hear this message, but I won't call your name. Look, dreams, we want our dreams. I don't care if they're frightening to you at first or not, but trust and believe you want your dreams because it is in your dreams where you can see if you've got on the whole armor of God or not. How do you mean, Zita? Well, are you winning in your dreams when you come under attack? Are you still getting beat up in your dreams? Are you still being manipulated into taking things and eating things? Are you still hugging and embracing dead relatives and people you know are long dead, but you see an image that looks similar to them? If you ever notice, it's never come quite, it never quite looks like them. It's just kind of similar, but something's always slightly off. You know, are you constantly having sex in the dream? Mm -hmm. Are you constantly doing things that God said not to do in the dream? Are you winning the attacks of the enemy coming in the form of animals, familiar spirits, and then sometimes straight coming, looking like they truly are demonic, creepy. Are you standing up against that? Well, if you're not, that's telling me, and it should tell you, you're not equipping yourself by putting on the whole arm of God daily. Like, well, how many times a day do I have to put this on? Uh... In the morning when you wake up, at night before you go to sleep, and sometimes I'm doing it before I have to go to a meeting at work, or the minute I see certain people walking up towards me, I'm like, I got to put on the armor of God because I already know they come in with stuff that is not godly because by now I've already requested God give me the spirit of discernment. And some people you just write, know, you know, you just know some people by the way they act. I mean, that's pretty much how you know them. But some people, it takes more than that. You need the spirit of discernment, right? Okay, so my computer's back up. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you, the enemy don't want somebody to hear this today. No, they come in with stuff that is not godly. But we're going to, here we go again with my double, double mic. Okay, we're going to get this message out because... Um, Honestly, I, I, I just can't, I can't answer everybody's prayer requests or dream interpretation 
that's why I did the post today online that, you know, just touch and agree with me online because I do pray for everybody that has requested prayer. I do pray for everybody that is asking for us to come into agreement. I do pray for you guys as well as I pray for myself because I understand how important it is to make covenant. Okay, so we're going to pick up on Ephesians 6. We're now reading verse 12, going through verse 18. And it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, hmm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's break that one down. All right, I see you're still with me. On my second computer, it tells me the video has ended. But you know what? We already know. Okay. So here it is. The Bible is telling you clearly who you're wrestling, not against flesh and blood, people that you can touch, feel, slap, smell, you know. You're not wrestling against that. But we are fighting, because that word wrestling is meaning fighting as well, against principalities, against powers, principalities, principalities, mm. spiritual beings. And if you didn't know, again, this comes from reading. I have the new book coming out in December um, and also the book, which is fiction that I wrote called The Veil Awakening, that deals with principalities and wickedness in high places. It's, it's written in a fiction form, but I do highly recommend you read the book. I'm not trying to make book sales, people. Let's get it right. I am passing on information that I have gleaned through time with God, through prayer and study. And because other people put resources and time and prayer into me, I put all that in the only way I know I could do it, which is book form, because God told me to start a publishing company to get material out there that nobody else really wants to touch. They're touching it haphazardly, but they're not really touching it, okay? And I'm doing this so that I can help other people and still provide for my family and hopefully be able to do it full time. Because trust me, I have so much poured into me that is bursting to come out. So I highly recommend you get the book, The Veil Awakening. I did a video, I'm giving away three free paperback copies today. So check that out. Otherwise it's available on Amazon, Two Tigers LLC and Barnes and Noble. And that deals with this verse right here, Ephesians 6, 12. It's talking about the day-to-day -day struggles that people, some of them don't even know what's going on. Some of them do against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places because every area, every territory has a principality governing it. It's like you've got the mayor of your town, you've got the head demon, head principality of your town too. And they draw their strength off of humans who are knowingly and unknowingly making covenant agreements with them. Literally pulling and sucking the life forces from people. So don't be ignorant, okay? Understand it's not that neighbor co-worker, that family member, the person driving on the highway that just cut you off. It's not them who you're dealing with. It is the principality first of the area, the powers that rule that area, the rulers of darkness of this world, the wickedness in high places. That's what's pulling their strings. It's like a puppet master. They're pulling their strings. And I know we want to, as humans in this flesh body, we want to get back. We want to tell them a piece of our mind.
But here's what I do, look. I take a minute, pause, and breathe. So I suggest you do the same thing. Take a minute, pause, and breathe, right? And then you start to pray. And, and praying is not, you know, getting on your knees and, and making a big rigmarole and, and whatnot about it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you, you sit there or stand there and you have a conversation with God. And you could do it in silence in your heart and say, Lord, help me. Hold my tongue. Tell me what to say, Lord. And I pray on the whole armor of God right now to protect me from what is trying to come against me. Simple as that. You know, it's not hard. It's not difficult. There are other things that are more difficult. Hmm? There are other things that are more difficult. And I would say dealing with the wicked stuff is more difficult than dealing with God and what he requires of us to walk in righteousness. Because you got to go through all kinds of rituals and stuff to be making all those evil sacrifices. If you didn't know, you could look it up. You got to be doing a lot. With God, you just got to have faith the size of a mustard seed, believe, pray, and fast. Trust me, fasting is much easier, for me at least, getting up at some ungodly hour in the middle of the night and got to go someplace in the dark, kill something, do some sex magic and all that stuff. Huh? Stop complaining. You really have an easy way out. But our flesh is weak and our flesh gets lazy. But they're saying is when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll make a change. So let's look at this. Ephesians 6 and 13 now says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The evil day. Hi, Sister Cassandra. Hi, Mary. The evil day. What do you mean the evil day? Well, evil day, because everybody's going to have an evil day or days or periods, right? We all go through days, weeks, months, years of trials. Some of them, they feel, oh, my goodness, some of them feel like this is it. There's no way out. I've been there. I, I just can't see how. I'm going to get out of this. Notice how many times I said the word referring to I, me. But if my faith and trust is in Christ and I cast all my cares upon him, why am I trying to figure it out? My job is to reverence him, reverence God, pray, let my light shine, build up my faith, Ensure that I'm trusting and believing, not in myself and what I see, but what I know is happening behind the scenes. Again, the unseen, the things I cannot see. Because who am I fighting against? I'm fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. But can I see them? No. Are they there? You better believe it. I don't believe you either. You don't have to believe me. Look around. The evidence is clear. Look around. What are you going to believe? Hmm? You're going to believe everything you see? Or you're going to understand that what you see is only the manifestation of something behind a veil, behind a closed door? Let me break that down. Okay, I see... I see this person driving this fancy car. I see that. Now, I can assume many things. I can assume that they did X, Y, Z to get that car. Or I can assume ABC that they did that to get that car. I don't know what they did to get that car, but they're driving a nice car, and I'll be like, man. And I know plenty of people do this. Man, I wish that was me. Really? Do you really wish that was you? Because you don't know what that person did to get that car, to get that house, to get that husband, to get that wife, to get that physical thing that you can see, touch, smell. 
You don't know. Because truth be told, a lot of the things that they did to get those things that you see, you wouldn't do it. You couldn't do it because you're not equipped to do it. The stuff I went through, a lot of people would have went crazy. Stuff you went through, I don't want to go through that. I'm not you and you're not me. So what, 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 what you see with your physical eyes, don't believe all of that. Don't believe everybody you see, and I, I know you hear it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Don't believe all these posts you see on social media with these happy, smiley faces. Don't believe that. Don't believe all that foolishness. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for it. Because a lot of these people are lonely. And the only friends they got are these, uh, what can I call them, avatars? Because your picture and whatnot, that's your avatar. That's not you. I can't feel you through social media. And when I say I can't feel you, now I'm talking about spiritually. I can't feel you because you are physically the manifestation of who you are spiritually. Just like you walk in a room and you feel people, I just feel a certain type of way about that person or whatever. They're projecting. Projecting from where? From the place you cannot see, from the unseen. Anyway, some of y'all can catch that. Some of y'all may need to listen to this again. Ephesians 6, 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hmm. So a lot of people say the belt of truth, your loins, your loins, your loins. What comes out of your loins? That's your private parts. Hmm? Well, that's where you reproduce. That's where you continue the lineage. That's where, you, that's where your seed comes from. You got to know the truth about who you are. How are you going to know that if you don't spend time with who made you? I mean, duh. I see so many people believe in every doctrine, everything they see on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all the other things and platforms out there. They follow in this one, they follow in that one. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But understand where your truth comes from. Understand where your revelation comes from. Man, I hope y'all getting this. Mm. Then it says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Boy, that's a big one, huh? Because some of us swear we good. We right, we in right standing with God. We righteous. I'm good, I'm pure, I'm, 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 I'm a good person. My heart is pure. My heart is pure. My heart ain't pure, because I'm still in this flesh suit. And it ain't gonna be pure until the day I die. When I no longer have on this flesh suit, which, because I was born in corruption, I was born in sin, huh? We the seed of Adam, hello? So don't ever say you you righteous. I mean, you could be righteous to a level, but don't don't ever say you know your heart is pure and all that and you good. You ain't good. We ain't never gonna be a hundred percent good. So what does that say? Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, we're talking about the spiritual armor of God, right? You want to have on that breastplate because that's protecting your heart. That's protecting your lungs, you know, your rib cage, that's, which is holding you up, protecting your spine. Because that, that breastplate covers the front, but it also straps around the back and it's, it's secure. Oftentimes in the battle, it'll cover the front and the back, right? That's your most vulnerable part. You know, boxers, what do they do? They protect their face, hold their hands up, and then they bring their elbows down, drop it, and, and lean in to protect the left, protect the right. However, watch MMA fighting. You'll understand even more how you better protect your innards, like they say in the South. You got to protect yourself. 
but protected with righteousness also means that you can't be going out there beating folks down with the word of God. That's not, that's just not how you do stuff. Because remember, we all were there before we got here. We all needed somebody to show us grace, show us mercy, show us kindness. Don't ever think that you're so holy, you're so righteous. So we got to put on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning we got to remain constantly aligned with God's will, constantly aligned with God and his truth. We cannot be today with God. Tomorrow, I like this person and they, they over here, they ain't really with God, but I like them. So I'm a... Um, Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm gonna hang out with them. What? You compromising now? So you took off your, your breastplate of righteousness to go hang out with somebody that your flesh like, or to go someplace that your, your flesh wanted to go, or to listen to something that your flesh wanted, or you just did it to appease someone else. You get what I'm saying, I know you do. You, when you put this armor on, have you ever seen like the armor that they wore back in the day? that heavy, heavy metal, not the, not the ones made of the heavy chain link. After they, they, they came up with the old metal ones, like in Roman times and whatnot. Have you seen that stuff? That stuff was heavy. That was pure metal. You know, it was hot. They wore that so that they didn't get killed on the battlefield. Spiritually, that's what it's going to take. So you can't be taking off your breastplate because like, that's one of the biggest, that besides that, your shield, that's like the biggest piece you got. Because you don't want to get stabbed in your, in your abdomen or your back or in your side or up in your chest area. You don't want to bleed out, do you? Because that's a slow, torturous death right there. I don't know. I could see from, that don't look like it's going to be quick. Everybody that gets stabbed up in that, they, they slowly leak out and die. You think the enemy ain't trying to kill you? Really? You really thinking that? Wow. All right. So Ephesians 6 and 15 is saying, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm. So here it's saying you need to put on your feet the gospel of peace, because everywhere you walk, you need to be walking with the peace, peace of the gospel. Because trust me, remember who we fighting? The strategist. He already know the buttons he can push in your life to get you off kilter and just get you all excited. And you ain't thinking about peace. You want war. You want vengeance. You want revenge. You got to walk. You got to put them shoes on that represent the peace of God. So whenever you walk into a place, they already know peace is coming with you. How do I know if I got that on me? Hmm. How do I know my shoes represent the peace and the armor of God? Well, do people gravitate towards you to find resolution, to find rest from their terminal's day? Is your office at work or your cubicle or your desk all of a sudden, you like the in-house therapist from people who ain't even thinking about God. But they know with you, there is peace. There's the atmosphere of peace. Wherever your foot go, there is peace. And people who are living a hell-on-earth existence, they want peace too. Some of them, unfortunately, don't know how to find peace, the peace we're talking about. So when you walk into the place, their spirit sense that in your spirit and they gravitate towards you. So be careful how you deal with folk, okay? Don't be short with people all the time. And if you got a short fuse and a temper, you need to go to God in prayer and fasting and say, Lord, deal with me with this issue. Tell me how I ended up with this issue. Where did this come from? I need to deal with that. Because guarantee you're going to have a time when you're going to wish someone would just take a second and show you how to gain such peace. You, you don't have to be rich. 
because rich and having a lot of worldly things, that don't bring peace. Having peace allows you to have good sleep at night. Walk around in the day smiling and cheesing like you won the lottery and people trying to figure out what's wrong with you. Or, 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 or what's going on with you? What you into? I need to get into some of that. Come on, people, let your light shine. Ephesians 6, 16, and it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And you think they ain't coming after you? It says so right there. All the fiery darts. Have you get, again, I got to go back to those medieval time movies where they just, they didn't have no guns. They, they, use, they use arrows. Those things hurt. They killed you with arrows and, and knives and, and swords. And have you seen like it rain down arrows? I mean, I watch a lot of, uh, of uh, movies in periods called period pieces. Watch a lot of, um, of Asian movies too in those period pieces where they had a lot of arrows. And I saw this one Jet Li movie. And at the end, they couldn't, they couldn't kill him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He was, he, was, he was a serious martial artist. That's a whole nother subject. But anyway, they had to get an army of men and they shot these long black arrows at him. That's the only way they could kill him, right? So think of this. Think of you being shot at with unseen, unseen fiery darts, arrows. They just ain't, they just not like arrows or darts. They actually on fire. So they trying to kill you and burn you at the same time. Man, they want you dead. Spiritually, that is. Dead to the truth of God and who he is. Because they want your body. Remember, we're talking spiritual stuff here. They want your body because they want to inhabit it and control your body. They don't have a physical one. They want yours, but they spiritually want you dead or so, so, so bound and, and in bondage that you, you, you might as well be dead because you have no control over your physical body. So why, that's the, okay, the shield. Have you, have you seen somebody use a shield before? It's to prevent attacks, to prevent darts and, and arrows and swords and whatnot. And you've got to have a shield because your breastplate is only covering, you know, like from your shoulders down to your waist. The helmet is good, but what's, what's protecting your neck? What's protecting your arm? You could kind of protect it and, and swat a blow here and swat a blow there. But if you've got like a bunch of arrows and darts coming at you, you want something for it to hit. I know a lot of you watch action movies too. Let's take that. When somebody's being shot at, what do they do? They look for some type of shielding, a desk, a wall. Whatever they can get behind, that becomes their shield. So you have to have the shield of faith. Because again, we fight in unseen forces. So how are you going to fight an unseen force if you ain't got faith? I got the faith of the size of at least a mustard seed. That God has his angels encamped around me to protect me from the fiery darts of the enemy, which I cannot see. But I know they're there because some of them got through when I doubted. Some of them got through when I slipped and fell. And I felt in my physical body, the ache, the pain. Hmm? I saw where some of my stuff got burnt up in the physical because that fiery dart got through because I didn't have the shield of faith. Explain that piece, Sita. Somebody missed that. Okay. You had, man, you had, I'm going to have to use somebody's quote from today. I ain't calling no names, but I just, this is what the Holy Spirit say to do. So here I go. You had all your, your, your hopes and dreams and getting that job. But you didn't get it. And God allowed for you to see the rejection letter, email. You got that rejection phone call. 
could be like, well, that wasn't God's will for you. Yeah, that could be true. Also, it could be the fact that, what did I say in the beginning? You had your faith and the trust that you was gonna get that job. You was having it in that job. You was having it in the fact that you aced that interview, that your resume is on point, that you got all the credentials. You had all your faith in you, in you. How do I go on a job interview? Lord, if this is not the job you have for me, don't let me get it. Let me know instantly at the beginning of this interview. So let it be short, quick, and over in no time. I don't want to waste no time. Nowhere where you don't want me to be. But Lord, if this job be for me, if this is your will for me, let it be. Give me peace when I walk into that room. Let me know that this is for me through peace. Because I've been on some job interviews where I already knew it wasn't the one. The minute the man started talking or the woman started talking, I was like, yeah, Lord, thanks for that confirmation. You dropped that in my spirit. This is not the one for you. But every adventure taught me something. Right? Everything you do teaches you something. So take those fiery darts that burn up your hopes and your dreams and say, okay, let me reflect. What did this just teach me? This taught me that I need to pray more and fast more and get before God and I need to build up my faith because I sure had faith in my own abilities here when I already know from past experiences that is not of me. It is only of God that I succeed. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Faith, man. Faith is what is the most, yeah, faith is like most required on this spiritual walk because we can't see what we have our faith and trust and hope in. So whenever you get low on your faith, you know, like you put gas in your car, when your faith tank getting low, you gotta fill that up. You can't let that get low and you cannot let it get empty. You cannot let it get low and you cannot let it get empty. Because the battle that we are in, the enemy, the wickedness, the rulers, the principalities, they dress it up so good in the physical. Man, you talk about glitter, everything bling bling. Everything just looks so good. And remember that the enemy knows the word of God. So he does what the word said, don't add or take away, not even one dot or tittle. So what does he do? He adds and take away a dot and a tittle to make it look almost like this is God. Man, what you mean this ain't God? This God. That ain't God. This got to be God. I done prayed for this. I done fasted for this. This God. I know this God. Hmm. So you prayed and you fasted for it, right? So how, let's go back. Did you go to God and say, God, I want, I want a house. God, I want a wife. I want a husband. I want a car. I want a business. God, I want that job. Or did you go and say, Father, give me your will in this area of my life. Father, through my dreams and visions, Confirm to me your will for my life. Father, give me the spirit of discernment to know without a shadow of a doubt when things come before me that it is your will or not. Is that how you approached it? Many of you will go back and reflect and say no, no, no. And then some of you be like, yeah, I did. But, uh, well, yeah, you know, I heard that little small voice, you know, and I saw them flags, but I just thought that was people hating on me or the enemy just trying to throw a wrench in my, in my wheel. And so when you saw the red flag, you didn't immediately pray and go on a fast to get deeper revelation. Because you can't come to me and tell me, and I'm talking about this from experience, when God sends you a flag, shows you something, because he will show you. Question is, are you looking 
and are you receiving what you see? Okay. Did you go on a fast to get revelation? And then when you got the revelation and you weren't sure, did you stay in prayer and ask God to give you revelation of what he showed you? Because you ain't sure how to interpret what you saw. Did you seek out somebody else and ask them to assist you? What did I just say there? Assist you, not tell you, thus saith the Lord. Because just how they're hearing from God, you can hear from God too. I don't know why people think only like 2% of the population could hear from God. All they did was study, pray, fast, get before God, and kill their flesh daily, hourly, every second, every minute. However often it took until they got to the point where they could stand against the wiles of the devil. You can do it too. So don't come talking about, I can't. I just don't. I just, I, I can't. No, you can't. You write about that. You can't. You got to put your faith and trust in the one that can. Who is that? That's Jesus who said he will send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. That's my, that's my die. Ride or die. That's my ride or die. The Holy Spirit. Trust me. When I tell you, I'm talking to him about you all the time. When you in my face, jigger jabbing, jabber jabbing, I'm saying, Lord, you know, Holy Spirit, hey, hey, show me, tell me. Because I don't have time to sit and be idle with you. And that's the attitude you need to take. Because people are hurting. I've seen a lot of posts, people telling me, I've seen the videos. I hear conversations in the street. On my job in the store. People are hurting. People are hurting. And the gift that God has wrapped up in you, you won't even let it develop because you so you so impatient. You you just didn't wake up last week and decide, uh, yeah, I'ma do right. Maybe you did, but follow me here. I'ma do right. And for 10, 20, yeah, I know I ain't talking to no 10 year olds, so let's, let's go back. 21, I'm gonna start at 21 at least. For 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71 years, you've been doing foolishness. And you think you're just gonna erase all of that programming? Cause yeah, you've been programmed, you've been, you've been programmed and you've been doing things repeatedly till it became second nature. Well, guess what? You got to let God's way, God's laws, God's will become second nature to you too. So that every morning when you wake up, the first thing on your mind is prayer and talking to God, thanking him for opening your eyes, casting out anything in your life that is not of God, denouncing, coming into agreement with dreams that you had that you ain't sure what covenant you made so you're like lord i come against any covenant in my dream that was not from you and i come into agreement with any covenant in my dream that was with you lord i pray on the whole armor of god on me and my family lord i cover myself my family my property my possessions with the blood of jesus Well, I, I get up really late, dude. I don't have time to go and pray. Bruh, I be doing it in the shower. Can we be real? I'm, I love my bed because I stay up all night working. So in the morning, trust me, I'm trying to milk that, that last five minutes out that alarm clock. I got a time. Now I know exactly how many, how many minutes it takes for me to get to work. I be milking the bed. So I jump up and I start praying while I'm getting dressed. I start talking to God while I'm getting dressed. And immediately I start to recall my dream. And I'll confess it was a habit of mine to pick up my phone and check social media. And then I forget my dream because I don't saw the foolishness on social media. And the enemy used that to just wipe my dream from me until I got to where I was praying, getting dressed, and then Holy Spirit will bring back pieces. So I stopped doing that. I hit the alarm clock and then I start to recall my dream while I'm praying because there are pieces in my dream that God wanted me to see and the enemy didn't. These things take 
practice which brings us to Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Say that again. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hi, Kassanel, thanks for watching. Mm. What? I gotta put on the helmet of salvation? Yeah, cause you need to know you saved. You need to understand that you were bought with a price, a heavy price. You need to understand that you are no longer your own. And you need to remember that. So you need to put on that helmet to guard your mind from all the things that will come at you during your waking and sleeping hours. You gotta protect your head, put on that helmet. You see people who ride motorcycles and whatnot, I'm not condoning it. God knows I ain't trying to get on the back of one of those. They wear that helmet. People that play football, shout out to the football lovers. They wearing that helmet because they're getting crashed and knocked about on the regular. And they got to protect their head. So spiritually, we need to put on the helmet of salvation because remember now, we dealing with spiritual things here. When we go to fight in the spirit, we got to know Whose side we on? Because trust me, the enemy knows whose side you on. Some folks say, well, the enemy ain't been attacking me a lot. I guess I'm good. Are you living right? Meaning, are you following the will of God for your life? Because he done told you. I know he did. Again, you just didn't listen when he spoke. You didn't look out for the warning signs. You didn't want to see the warning signs. You, put, you turned a, a blind eye. You put your blinders on telling you what I know, people. I'm telling you what I know. Hmm? So you going up against the enemy, you got to have on the salvation, helmet of salvation, because you got to know whose you are. I, I, I couldn't go against and do spiritual warfare before I, I really got into God's will for my life. I couldn't do that because I didn't know whose I was. I didn't know what side I really, really belonged to. I, I, said I was saved. I believe in God. But was I really standing on the front line and understanding that behind me is a whole slew of believers fighting alongside with me, a host of angels around me? We all in this together? No, I didn't really know all that. I thought it was just me on a Thursday doing it with God half-heartedly getting whooped on in the spirit. I didn't know nothing about the whole armor of God. I heard it preached before I did talk about it, but it was like many things skipped over, mumbled and skipped over, not broken down. So you got to know whose side you're on because sure enough, you cannot pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, if you don't know whose side you're on. Come on, man, come on. How you going to pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, if you don't know who spoke the word? Let that sink in. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go and be like the sons of Sceva. Huh? You know them. They want to go cast out demons and stuff in the name of the, 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 the Jesus and, and, and that Paul them know. Paul them know. Yeah, Paul them know. Paul them understand the word. They understand the person who spoke the word. They understand the person that the word represented. So they had power. They had the sword. They had power. But you don't. So I'm going to segue here and, and just side note, if you are not equipped in spiritual, in spiritual warfare, meaning if you don't understand covenant, and you don't understand what this whole armor of God is all about, please, please, please don't go out there talking about you going to do deliverance. You're going to pray for people. God help you. You're going to lay hands on folk. Do not do that. Because you're going to be like the sons of Sceva who got whipped, I mean, beat down, trying to help somebody when they needed help themselves. Well, Zita, how do I know and how do I learn? Pick up the word of God. Read the Bible. Listen to teaching. Listen to sound doctrine. How do I know if it's sound, Zita? How do I know? 
You start praying and talking to God like you talk to your friends. You know the ones you be chatting with all hours of the day through text messaging and, and Skype and, and video chat and all that, FaceTiming. Just how you talking to them, you talk to God. I ain't telling you to use no old English, old Taoist, goddess and all of that. No, you talk to him the way I'm talking to you. That's how I talk to him. Because I don't want there to be no misunderstanding. And I said that to him a long time ago. God, I need you to talk to me clear. Make it plain. Just talk to him. Get to know him. Put that energy and, and time and devotion into him like you do into the things you want for your flesh. Break it down again because I know we, I, I got people now following me who, who ain't never heard nothing about the gospel. And don't understand how to start building a relationship with God. So just how you put your time and energy into that girl, that man, that TV show. I still don't know why you're watching that junk. Because it ain't, it ain't edifying you. It ain't filling you up with no knowledge of God and wisdom. But anyway, you know, the things you record on the DVR because you can't catch the live. So you can watch it later. Or people that are talking about any and everything that appeals to your flesh. Here's a good one. You know how much time and energy you put into getting that degree when you went to school or you went to trade school and learned that craft? You know how you had to put in so much hours? You had to do study, do homework, do projects. Take that energy and say, Lord, I want to know you. Lord Jesus, I want to know you. Father God, I want to know you. Holy Spirit, I want to, I want to know you. I want to know, Holy Spirit, when you talking. I want to know when you move. I know, but how do I know? Because I spend so much time with them. Like, I'd be like, Lord, I know, you know, you know, Lord, I know you're busy talking on our behalf. And sometimes I'll be like, Father God, how you doing? I don't want nothing, Lord Jesus. Father God, I just come before you just to say, how you doing? I know you're busy, Father. I don't want nothing. I just want to say hi. Do you know how good that feels when somebody just call you up to say hi? You know how good that feels, right? Can you imagine how good that must make him feel? You didn't want nothing. You just woke up first thing in the morning and you just was like, Father God, I just want to say hello. How was your night? Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for sending your angels to keep me protected. What did that cost me? Nothing. A little bit of gratitude. Those of you who have children, you understand that concept. You just want your kids to show you some gratitude. And when they don't, you look at them like they aliens. Like, where'd you come from? How can you not be appreciative of what I do for you? Because I don't have to do it for you. I do it out of love. Don't they make you feel bad when they don't even just say thank you or just give you a hug? Don't say nothing. Just come and give you a hug. When my daughter give me that look and she come bum rush me and give me a hug, she don't have to say nothing because I know she's grateful. But there are times when she don't say nothing. I'm looking at her like, where you come from? You couldn't have come out of me. You couldn't be the one that I puke my guts up for. You couldn't be. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, praying always with all power and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Mm. So again, some instruction is saying, praying always. What did I say? Man putting an armor on in the morning, in the night, in the middle of the day, talking to God all the time, putting into God all that chat time, cupcake time, as they say, all that chat time that I do with these people who I don't know from Adam on social media or blowing up my phone and we really don't meet face to face, but maybe once every couple of months, I'm giving them all my time. You know what, forget that. I'm giving my time to someone who is here for me, who answers my call, who has my best interest at heart. I'm spending time with God and trust and believe. When you start spending more time with God, folks gonna understand they really can't get too much of your time because they gonna see the change in you and, and you gonna start being really blunt and nice with it, but still blunt and say, I, I gotta go. I, 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 I got, well, what you gotta do? I, I gotta go listen to this word. I need a word. I got, I'm in the middle of praise and worship. I can't talk now. 
they're going to start seeing themselves ending up in the voicemail. They're going to see their messages taking like a couple of days to get a response from you. Why? Because, man, if you look, you're going to be like how I used to be and how I still maintain face down in the word, ears plugged into Bible on audio or listening to sound doctrine. Cover that again. How do I know a sound doctrine? Because they are speaking to my spirit, which is filled and in tune with the spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. So if I'm connected to truth, how are you going to come to me and twist truth and expect me to receive that? But if I'm not connected to truth, I won't know what you're telling me, if it's truth or a lie. Again, you got to spend time with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with God. And for those of you who are new, let me break that down. The Holy Spirit, he's the one that's living in you. He's the one connected to your spirit because you know you are spirit in a flesh suit. This body is just a flesh suit. Like you put on your clothes to cover your nakedness. This, this flesh is covering your spirit. So you can walk around and interact in the physical world, but your spirit man is always connected and interacting with the spiritual world, even while you're awake and when you're asleep. So I got my best buddy, the Holy Spirit, who comes with me all the time because my spirit man is forever awake, forever aware, forever conscious. Then I got Jesus Christ who, who died for me. You know, that should have been me. That should have been you on that cross, getting our back ripped up with that cat and nine tails. Ugh. Getting our hands impaled with, with, with nails and our feet and hanging up on a cross and the spear poked in our side so we could just yeah, gush out and die. It should have been us, but he, he thought it not robbery. He, he, he didn't think so high of himself that he came and he took our place. Man, do you understand? He took our place on the cross. Man, that should make some of y'all just shout, holler, scream, and, and turn right now from your wicked ways. And he rose with all power. And right now he's standing on the right hand of God and he's talking to God and saying, Father, I know they're wicked. I know they're dirty. They're filthy. They ain't no good. But they believe me. They believe in me. They trust in me. They trust in me and who I represent and I represent you. They have faith, though they can't even see me. Because those who saw Jesus Christ long gone, long dead, they ain't here no more. Ain't nobody seen him that's still walking. So we only have faith. They have never seen me, but they trust and believe, Father, in words that are alive in this book called the Bible. Because God is so, so holy. And he can't go against his word. He said, I put my word above me because he can't go against his word. He can't look at sin. So we are covered in the blood of Jesus. So we become sinless looking to God so he could look upon us, right? Because if you ain't got the blood of Jesus on you, God ain't even looking at you. Because you're full of sin. He's like, I, I, I can't even look at that. Light and darkness cannot coexist. You turn on the light in a dark room, the darkness vanishes. You turn off the light, the darkness reappears, right? So God is on his throne and he's just looking down. And, and Jesus is petitioning me like, think about Mary, think about Susan, think about Zita, Lord. They put in their trust and faith in me, Lord. They live in their lives according to your laws, Lord, that are in your word, Lord, Father God. They, they, they are doing everything they humanly can do that's possible in that human flesh. And when they fall weak, Lord, they ask for forgiveness and they pray and they fast and they do all the things to come back into right standing with us. So, Father God, have mercy on them. They're crying out, Lord God, for protection. Dispatch your angels, Father God. Dispatch your angels to cover them, protect them. Holy Spirit, I promised I was going to send them a best friend. I was going to send them someone to comfort them the way I did when I walked the earth. But I can't because I'm here. I'm preparing a place for them to come. So I'm sending you to be with them the way I was 
when I walk the earth. Console them, comfort them, lead and guide them, and just, just make sure that they don't take on the things of the world that are going to corrupt them. Speak to them, but don't scare them. That small, still voice. I mean, because if somebody just starts screaming and hollering in my head, hello, I, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to be twitching. I'm going to be nervous. Think about how you talk to a baby. You're a grown person. You're an adult with a booming voice. When you talk to a baby, you know, you're getting all soft and cute and hi, baby. And you, the key thing there is you're talking softly to them. And they respond to the softness of your voice. And when you speak loud to them, they get afraid. They jerk and their eyes pop wide open. They're afraid. Their hearts start racing. They fear you. So then the next time they see you, they're going to look at you half like, I don't know. Are they going to be talking soft? Are they coming to scare me? So you got to be careful how you handle a baby. Well, the Holy Spirit is, is, is all powerful. If he was to really talk to you at full volume, come on. You'd be going crazy. You wouldn't sleep. And we all need sleep because we're in this flesh body. This flesh needs sleep. Our brain, our natural brain needs sleep. So those are the roles. You know, if you didn't know, now you know. Those are the roles that each one has. Each one serves a purpose. And Ephesians 6, 18 is saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Well, what does that mean? I'm not going there talking about, well, this is what I want, Lord. This is what I, I, I really need this. No, I'm going before God talking through my spirit man who sees more than what my physical man sees. And when I start to pray before God, and I said this on my previous video, when I start to pray before God, after I get all the formalities out and I really just break it down and take a deep breath and say, all right, let's get to the, to the nitty gritty of this. Let's get to the bottom line. My heart is like it opens up and everything pours out. I literally feel my heart pour out and my words come from my heart and my words come from deep within. It's like a well just overflow. And I start to confess things that my my, my flesh and pride would say, don't say that. Don't bring that up. You ain't got to bring. God knows. He knows everything. Yeah, but it goes back to covenant. I got to confess this thing and say, Lord, I repent. Or Lord, I'm confessing something. I need to make a covenant with you. Because spiritually, we need this documented then. We need to write this down in the court of God. We Just like in court of, of man, you got the court reporter and she's recording everything that's spoken. Well, we need to record this in heaven so that the angels and the principalities of darkness that rule this world, they hear it is recorded. It is recorded in time, like all the actions and things that you've done to this point has been recorded. And those are the things that Satan is going like he did with Job. Trying to try, God was like, all right. He's like, well, you got him covered and protected. Take your hedge of protection from around him, and I bet you'll curse you to his face, you know, and, and, and he'll do all these things. Okay, so they weren't talking about him cursing in the, in the spirit. He was going to confess with his mouth. Right? But Job understood where his power, where his resources from, where his wealth where his well-being, where his salvation, where his destiny lied and whose he was. And he understood that this is but a flesh suit. I am spirit. And when this body, flesh body rots and dies, my spirit man remains. So how am I going to curse the one that I got to spend eternity with? That just don't make no sense. So, yeah, we endure a lot of things in our flesh. But when we pray, we got to come not with some prayer that sounds good. Because I know we all do it. You know, we start praying and we like, oh, that sounds good. And we just start running off and we copy prayers that we heard other people say. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit just sitting back. He's just sitting back. And then when you start confessing the real truth, he comes to the forefront and he holds you. You feel him holding you. And then if like some of us, you just break down crying because you know you're a fraud 
And you know you got to be real with the one who already sees right through you. Again, if you're a parent and your kid come to you and you know they lie, you, you ain't listening to them until they get to the nitty gritty. And when they start talking the truth, you look at them in their eye and you be like, finally, finally, we're getting somewhere. That's how it is with God. So you got to pray with all power and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. what that mean? You can't stop. You can't stop. And it ain't all about you. You just can't be praying for us. Because, oh God. If those people who prayed for me were only praying for themselves, I'd be in a whole heap of mess right now. If I would still be alive, I'd probably be dead. Because I, I am here, you are here, because someone prayed for you in the spirit. They went before God. They went before God praying for you. Praying that your spiritual eyes would be open. Just like, again, I keep referencing parents because I, I got to go what I know. Praying for my child. Praying for my family. Praying for my nieces and nephews. Praying for my loved ones. Praying for my friends. Praying for you that I touch and agree with, that I said I'm going to pray for you. People on my prayer list, I'm praying for you. Because someone prayed for me. Thank God someone prayed for me. Thank God someone was obedient and listened to the Holy Spirit when he said, pray for this one, pray for that one. Sow a seed into that one. Send this one just a little, hi, how you doing? Thinking about you. Post this on Facebook, post this on Instagram, make this message. You think I just be posting that stuff? Let me tell you, I'd be on my job trying to get my work done. And I'm in praise and worship mode. And the lyrics to the song, like they hit me yesterday. Holy Spirit was like, post this. Someone needs to hear this. Someone surely did, because they post back, they needed it. But I was hunky-dory, I was good, I was happy, because I was in my praise and worship. But I remember when the lyrics to those songs that I listened to, they hit me and I was snotting and crying and like, woe is me, but Lord, I thank you, because as the song would play or as the word would, would be ministered to me through a teaching sermon or video, my faith would rise and the Holy Spirit would bring back to my memory all the trials that God has already brought me through. And I'm going from glory to glory in God through faith in Jesus Christ with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Did I say I was doing it on my own? No. I've been learned that I cannot, do, I said, Lord, I can't exist without you. I can't even breathe without you. If I stop breathing, I'm dead. You stop breathing, you're dead. And only by his grace is he allowing your lungs to function at 100% capacity. Ask anybody who on oxygen, who got to breathe with oxygen tank around their back or on their leg or pulling it or who on a respirator and the machine is pumping up their body for them, putting the air in them because they can't do it on their own. I tell you what, have you ever been swimming and you got a little too excited and got in deep water and you couldn't swim too good and you went under and you were, boy, look here. And the top, the surface, you think you could reach it. I swam a lot as a kid. And you, yeah, the top looked like it's right there and you'd be like, I got enough for four more kicks and then I'm out of air but it's actually seven kicks to break that surface. And when you finally do, you inhale like, like yeah, because your life did depend on it. Have you ever had that kind of experience? Because honestly, it takes a near-death experience for many of us to realize it is not about us. It is not about us, and we cannot do this on our own. And the only way we're going to win this battle is if we armored up. I, I'm asking you, are you armored up? And what armor do you have on? Because a lot of people are armored up, but it ain't the armor of God that they got on. A lot of people are spending time in word, but it ain't the word of God. A lot of people are doing things according to laws but it is not 
the things according to the law of God. You'll get that. I know a lot of y'all got it, but y'all on the left and in the right and in the back pew, y'all gonna get that. Because I'm praying and trusting in God that you're gonna get this. But what excites me the most, and now I understand why the Holy Spirit is like, you gotta come on and just talk about this. Just, just, just this. Because people get excited. I see so many new converts from places on places in the world where Christianity gets you killed. I see them coming all the time on my pages. I see where they buy my books, the countries, and I'm like, whoa. Look at God. Not look at Zeta. Truth be told, I was, I was going to watch me some TV, watch me some movies. That's what I was supposed to do before I was going to do this. That's what I was going to do. I was going to get all about me. I'm like, I got me one day a week to really relax. And that's not a full day because I spent some time helping Kevin. So I don't really have a full day. But the Holy Spirit was like, no. Because remember when you was hungry that day? For a word when you needed an answer and you went searching and I led you to this person or that person somebody is they in that same position right now and you watching TV is not glorifying me and it ain't edifying the body and it ain't even building up your spirit man because I was just gonna be watching some TV and no it wasn't gonna be no Christian themed stuff I was just gonna be watching TV TV helps me shut my mind down because my mind's always going and so now i came on and i i said okay i understand what that feels like when you need a word or when you need an answer and you need revelation and i'm sorry i'm not looking at the screen anymore because it really does distract me but i'll get to your questions and, and whatnot after a while but i want to encourage you to not go out into the spiritual war that we all face the minute we take up our cross and follow Christ. The very moment you profess with your mouth that you are gonna follow Christ, that you trust and believe that he is your Lord and savior, believe me, you are now in spiritual war. You better go to boot camp, boot camp, Learn how to properly fast and pray. Spending time with God and his word. And asking God to surround you with people who have a heart for him. Take away the people out of your life who ain't about nothing, who certainly ain't about God. And don't be crying when he take away the, them people that you really thought you couldn't live without. Yeah, it's going to hurt. I, I know. It's going to hurt for a minute. I promise you, it's only going to hurt for a minute. But every time that pain comes, you know what I want you to do? Do what I did. I sat there and I thought about the glory step up I'm about to take. Because I thought where I was was really good and sweet and great. But remember, we go from glory to glory to glory. And then, I, I, and, and then the Holy Spirit will reveal to me just what that person was doing to me. Just how little positive impact they were having on my life. And I'd be like, wow, I dodged another bullet. Wow, you saved me yet again, Lord. Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you. When I sit here and I think about what I, I could have been going left when I was supposed to go straight. These people would have had me all bound up and then I'd be the one begging somebody to help me with my situation instead of me helping people I should have been helping all along. These folks dying out here, people. Spiritually, they are dying. Spiritually, they are already dead. They got one finger sticking up, literally still with hope. They just got one finger sticking up. Like, you know, I ain't got the energy to raise my whole hand, my whole arm. I'm laying in the bed. I'm, I'm stretched out, but I got one finger up. 
you know, you see in the movies and stuff, people in the hospital and they laid out family members and everybody around them and they just looking for one sign of life, one twitch, one flutter of the eyelash, one, one something, finger just twitch or something, leg, something, something. You got people like that, folks, that you see every day and you know who they are, but you turn a blind eye to them because you're so stuck on you. You're so into you. You're so selfish. And every time you stop being selfish, I want you to think about how it was when you needed somebody to just touch your finger. Forget taking your hand, but just touch your finger to say one kind word to you because that's all it was going to take for you to make a positive decision. One kind word. What does it hurt you to smile genuinely at people every day when you see them passing you by? To hold the door open for somebody, to compliment them on their haircut or clothes or whatever. I'm not saying you're being materialistic. That person might have some self-esteem issues and you just said, ooh, I love that outfit on you. Ooh, that color look good on you. Man, man, you doing it. That, that hairstyle really doing it. Man, you have some beautiful hair. I love your skin. I love your smile. Such a beautiful smile. I did a video talking about suicide. I see that is rearing its ugly head again. And that wasn't just, what, maybe a week or so ago, not so long ago. When I say people are hurting, people are hurting. And you got, you got it in you to give freely. Come on. Share the love, share the peace, share the joy of God with somebody today. Just one person today, before, before the midnight hour strikes. Can you share God with somebody today? I'm not saying you sharing the gospel with them, though that would be great. That's not what I'm saying. Because nowadays, people are so in tune to the spirit, spirit world, the spirit realm. You don't have to preach the gospel. You don't have to preach salvation to them. You just got to be you, the light on a hill. That's all you got to be, that, that, that bright city on a hill. You just got to let the love of God shine through you. You just got to let God shine through you. You got to just listen to the Holy Spirit. And when he says, say this to that person, and you be like, what? He says, say this to that person. And you be obedient. And you just say these words to them that he's telling you. And you ain't even got to say the Holy Spirit is telling me to say these things to you. You can you know, spook them out. You just say the words and they'll look at you like, how did you know that? Or they may not say anything at all, but their eyes will react. And they received it. And they'll go off and they'll ask the question, which is an invitation for truth to come in. Because see, your assignment might have been to drop that word. And the next person's assignment, whose path they cross, could be to direct them to the truth. We, we got to play our parts, you understand? We in the body of Christ. We can't have 10,000 heads and no, no legs, no hands, no fingers. We all got to play our role, play our part. I know what lane I'm driving in. I'm staying in my lane. There's some people trying to pull me out of my lane, but uh, know that I see you and I'm paying you no attention. Because if I come out of my lane, I'm going to get killed. I thank God for releasing me to do the lives that I do, the way I'm doing them. And if that ain't good enough for you, then I'm sorry. But I'm telling you this because I want you all to recognize the lane God has you in to, and to love your lane and stay in your lane and drive your car in your lane at the right speed. Don't be trying to go too fast and for God's sake, don't slow down. You're going to get where you're supposed to get when you're supposed to get there. And don't be picking up all these passengers along the way because they're going to slow your car down. They're going to run your gas because now you got extra weight in your car. Y'all going to catch that. Some of y'all already caught it. But for the slow folks, you will listen to this tape again and you will understand. The car is you. The lane is the destiny, the path that God has ordained for you to travel, walk, and, and be in ministry in. And then every time I say ministry, I ain't talking about you need to start one church somewhere, start one YouTube group or, or, or Facebook group or, 
or, or start some, no, that's not the ministry I'm talking about. Ministry that I'm talking about is how you play a role in the body of Christ. Because ministering to somebody is talking to somebody. But you can't talk ministry to somebody if you ain't got nothing in you. If you ain't spending time with the word of God, if you ain't meditating on the word of God, if you ain't fasting and praying, how are you going to go talk to somebody? How can I talk to somebody about accounting if I never took accounting classes? How can I explain taxes or, or, or payroll or, or, or journal entries to somebody if I didn't take an accounting course and if I didn't take accounting classes? How can I speak to somebody in a foreign language if I never took the time to learn that language? How can I talk to somebody about the circumstances and trials they're going through and how the promises of God are there for them and how God can bring them out if I never took the time to learn? How can I tell somebody about fasting if I never fasted? How can I tell somebody about dream interpretation if I never allowed God to show me and pour into me through his word, how to interpret dreams. And no, there ain't no Bible verse in scripture. You, you read this and then this, turn around six times and then you can interpret dreams. They don't work like that. How I got it, I said it before and I'll say it again. I just kept my face before God because I wanted to know what my dreams meant. I wanted to know why my life was the way it was, why my life goes the way it goes, what my future destiny in Christ and Jesus and God is. And then I had empathy, compassion for those who were going through what I already came out of. And the Holy Spirit reminded me how I felt when I was where they are. And he allowed me to turn around and pull them up. But the kicker was, I said, okay, Father, I got all this understanding. I feel like I'm about to burst physically. My spirit was so full. I feel physically like I'm about to burst. I need something to focus all of this on. I didn't ask and demand it be X, Y, Z. I just said, I need something to do in the body because I'd been separated for so long on my training on, in my boot camp and God was like okay she ready because he knew I was ready because I knew I was ready I knew I was ready because I was about to go out my mind with all this information inside and no one to share it with and meaning no one who wanted to hear it because I'm not about having idle conversation Okay, and here comes Kevin. And here comes that first message that I see. And I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is like, type this. And I just start typing. And it is like the information downloaded from my spirit man to my brain, to my fingers, to the keyboard. And it popped up on the messenger. And the person just came back and was like, you are on point. I sat back in my chair. I'm like, oh my God. I looked around in my living room. Never forget, I was on my dining room table. I looked around and I'm like, do something else, Holy Spirit. Do something else. Because I swore that those people was going to look at me like, what you talking about? Because I gave them detailed things that I should never know. Until people start pulling so much from me, I had to step back and say, whoa. Then I learned that you can't keep pouring out if you ain't being poured in too. So I had to learn balance. And then he was like, I want you to start this publishing company because the things that you have in you, I need you to put out so people can have it in a condensed form because they ain't gonna do what you did to get this knowledge. And you and I already know, let us be honest with each other. A lot of people are not going to spend the years I spent to gain this understanding. But some of you, thank God, you will. And you'll spend more time than I did. 
and you'll gain even more than I gained because you have a heart for God. And I'm so happy because the generations after me, they need you. We need people to continue this thirst, this hunger for God's word, for God's people, for the body of Christ. So don't hate on somebody else because they can do this. And do not, for God's sake, try to imitate them and what they're doing. Because you want to be like Mike, like the saying goes. You want to be like them. You want to have as many people on your live or you want to have as many people following you as them. Anybody know what I even look like? A few of you may know who I went to school with. What, 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 what importance is that? What does it matter? It's what's coming out of me that's important. Am I helping you? I know I'd be helping me and it's coming out of me, but I hear the words and it's helping me. And again, I remember being in that place where I needed an answer now. I need it now. Cause now is the time I'm dealing with, not tomorrow, not an hour from now, right now. I need the answer now. Put on the whole armor of God then. Get ready, get armored up. Have the faith the size of a mustard seed. If you don't know how small that is, go to the grocery store. They got the ground mustard with the little brown thick specks. Those are the seeds. You see how small they are? Or look at a pencil. Break the tip a little bit. That's the size of a mustard seed. If your faith is that small, you can do this. Because you got the faith. You got on the armor. You got your Ride or die, the Holy Spirit, you got your best buddy, the comforter here, ready. He's waiting around to do his job, but you ain't letting him because you want to drive. You want to ride and do it all because you done been in the trenches for two weeks, read two chapters of the Bible, listened to two hours of teaching on YouTube or Facebook, and you ready. You ready for what? Ready to get hurt? You ain't ready. Look, I say this with all love and kindness, but also in warning. Don't step out until God release you. Remember I said stay in your lane? You don't even know what your lane is at that point. You're still a babe in Christ. But the great news is people like me and all those others who take time out of their lives, time away from God to be used by God to do such things as this are freely available to give you sound doctrine, to, to give you insight, to help build up your spirit of discernment and, and tell you how to go about things. Man, if I had this kind of information when I first became a, a Christian, I don't know where I'd be. Leaps and bounds. My training probably would have been cut in half, cut, cut down to a quarter of the time it took me. I didn't know about fasting and how to fast properly and how to take the amount of money or the meals I'd miss and bless somebody with that how to sow into somebody. And I'm not talking offering in the church. I'm talking about sowing into the life of somebody, whether it be a word, money, food, clothes, shelter, a hug, a smiley face, a phone call, sharing the word of God, sowing into their lives. Didn't understand all of that. Didn't understand that I needed to read the word of God, meditate on the word, sit there and let that sink in and then apply the word to my life. All I knew was go to church on Sunday, drag myself to Sunday school, midweek service, try to get on one of the, you know, one of the usher board or, or something, choir or something, finance team, something, try to do some working in the church. I thought that's all it took. Meanwhile, I'm just getting beat up and wondering why my life is so stagnant why I take one step forward and you know it, two steps back. 
didn't understand that it took all of that. It took all of that. It took all of that. It took all of this. It takes putting on the whole armor of God and getting ready, getting ready to do battle, but not physical battle. Battle on my knees, battle standing on my feet, laying on my back in prayer, laying out flat in front on my face in prayer, riding in my car in prayer, talking to God in the grocery store. Maybe not out loud because I don't want people to think I'm crazy. But in my heart and in my spirit, with my mouth closed, I'm still talking to God. I'm steady getting to know him, steady telling him, let me know you. Show me who you are. Someone was like, will I ever see the face of God? Are you ready to see the face of God? You desperate for help, but you're not ready to see the face of God. Abraham couldn't even see the face of God. God was like, man, I know you really want to, and uh, you're really high in the spirit right now, but uh, uh, go in this little crack right here. I'm going to pass by you. Let me help you help yourself. Let me help you not get yourself killed. And you think you ready? If he protected Abraham from seeing him, you think you ready? You're not ready. But good news, you are on the right path to becoming ready. For God to reveal to you what you are capable of receiving. Say that again. That drive, desire, hunger that's inside of you, you that, that, that's the cue to you, that's the clue, that's the, that's the green light to say you are on the right track to becoming ready to be used by God, to be filled by God. For God to share the mysteries with you. He ain't sharing them with everybody because everybody doesn't have the heart of God. He know you're going to get what you can and you're going to turn back to your wicked ways and use it against God's people. I'll say what has been said and then I'm out. The enemy and his followers, they study. They fast, they teach, they put into practice the law and laws that govern spiritual things. They reverence their master without question. They do what they gotta do no matter the hour of the day, no matter the weather outside. No matter if they naked or fully clothed, got a job, ain't got two pennies to rub together, got a house, ain't got a pot to piss in. Yeah, I said that because we got to keep it real here. No matter what their physical state is, they do what is required of them to stay in the good graces of their master. And their master, catch this, is a created being. I ain't serving nothing created. I am serving the creator. Because no teacher truly gives the student all their knowledge. I'll say that again. No teacher truly gives his student all of their knowledge. The enemy is knowledgeable. Yes, indeed. But he don't have all knowledge. And he only has power that we give him. Because all power was given to man by God. And the only way the spirits are able to work in this earthly realm is through agreement with man, both good and evil. They cannot operate without our agreement to them. Otherwise, what, what good would we be? I mean, we, they wouldn't need us, really. And, and to be honest, let's think about that logically. This physical world was not created for spirits. It was created for us because we are physical beings. 
we become fully spirit beings when our body, which is flesh and physical, dies. Our spirit man leaves the body. Right now, we, we are, for lack of a better word, we trapped, capsuled, entombed in this flesh. And that's a good thing. Because truth be told, we are not ready for full revelation of all things spiritual. Some of y'all be talking about, I want to see in the spirit. Okay, let's be careful what you ask for, first of all, and understand what type of seeing you want to see. Do you want to see behind the veil? Because some can. And very few stay sane. And some see with the spirit of discernment. So be careful, people, how you say things. Be careful how you pray and ask and petition God for things. Because just how God's listening, so is the enemy. And if there's a crack in your armor, if there's a door open, he will come in and he will give you these false gifts, and he will help you to see things. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. And thank God for being so all-knowing that he understands, I got to save this child from themselves. Because they don't know what they, what Jesus say, you pray amiss. You, you praying and you don't know what you're even praying. You, I mean, you asking stuff in prayer and you don't even know what you're asking. If you really knew what you was asking, you would not go before God and say, give me this and give me that. But you see, that comes when you spend time in the word, you spend time with God, you let the Holy Spirit lead and direct you, you will understand how fast you can go, what lane you need to stay in, because he's going to give you insight into spiritual things. And like my book says, in the Veil Awakening, the subtitle says, what you don't know can kill you. Spiritually, that is. And if you spiritually dead, your body will soon follow. If you're spiritually dead, your body will soon follow because spiritual death means you're not in your right mind. So you're going to neglect your physical body and a physical body cannot sustain or survive for a long period of time on neglect. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I pray that you heed the voice of God that is now speaking to you. You follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to pray for you right now. And all you got to do is say, I touch and agree. I touch and agree. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. And we ask that as a group of believers, whoever comes and says, I touch and agree right now with this prayer, Lord God, that you would save them. Because, Father God, they're confessing that they believe in the crucifixion, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They have called him unto themselves to be their Lord and Savior. Lord, they're asking you to fill them with your Holy Spirit right now, to develop a relationship with them, to teach them your ways, Lord God. Father God, I ask that you would surround them, send them people with a love for you, Father God, who will help guide them until they are understanding of how spiritual things work. Send someone, Lord, they can physically see and touch and hear until they're able to be alone in the spirit with you. Father God, right now, there are people who are petitioning you Father God, they're petitioning you for understanding, for revelation about things that are just confusing, confounding them. Father God, I pray right now that the spirit of confusion be removed from their lives, that their spirit eyes be fully open, clear, so that they can see what it is you are trying to show them, Father God. Father God, I unplug clogged ears spiritually right now, Lord. 
We intake so much noise every minute, every hour, every day from the world around us that it becomes hard for many to hear your voice, Father God, to hear it spoken through the mouths of others, Father God. Father God, allow people to hear your voice through the words of others and to also hear the voice that is not yours. Give them a renewing a filling of the spirit of discernment so that they can know what is of you and what is not of you. Father God, right now, I pray for those who are asking for restoration of their families. So many, oh my God. So many are crying out for restoration of their marriages. Father God, I ask you right now that you would touch them. Give them peace, first of all. Give them peace, Father God, in their mind, in their heart, in their soul. Then, Father God, speak to them. Direct them. Tell them what to do and how to bring about restoration. Father God, I know that you are calling so many people right now to fast. Give them the energy, Father God, and the mindset. But most of all, Father God, give them the will, the hunger. Father God, if you got to if you got to beat and chastise them the way we do to our physical children when they get out of line and they want something, Father God, I, I want you just to hold them, Father God, and shake them to the realization that they must comply. They must seek your face because there's no other way. And them snotting and crying and doing everything else but fasting is not going to get it done. Father God, I implore that you touch them right now. Tell them what type of fast and how long to fast, Father God. Get them started on the journey to freedom, to deliverance, to revelation, to understanding, to victory. Help us, Father God, to stop being lazy and not doing what we need to do when we know what we need to do. Help us, Lord God, to stop being so full of envy, so full of jealousy. So full of covetousness, Lord. We want what they got. We want what they have. But we don't want to pay the cost. Help us, Father God, to not ask for things we are not equipped to handle. Help us, Father God, to stop wanting things we are not ready for. Because our eyes see. And our heads get big. Remove the spirit of pride from us, Father God. Remove the spirit of doubt from us, Father God. Jesus. Help us, Father God, to understand that in you, everything is perfect. In you, everything has purpose. And if we trust in you, you will lead and direct us into all truth through your Holy Spirit. You said you would not keep any good thing from us. Key word is good thing. Not everything, Lord God, we understand is good. So help us, Father God, when we can't see that these things are not good. Take the blindfolds off our eyes spiritually, Father God. Make it as big as a house in front of us. How wicked and evil and how destructive these things we seek after are for our lives. Scare us if you have to, Lord God, scare us, scare us, scare us till we so scared we ain't even gonna turn in that direction no more. Put your fear in us, Father God, that we will stay before you and ask only your will for our lives. Father God, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us. If you did nothing else, Father God, for what you've done for us, Father God, that in itself is enough. For you allowed your son to die in our place. You allowed us to have eternal salvation, a destiny beyond this life. Father God, for that, we are eternally grateful. Help us, Father God, to understand what it means to truly be appreciative of the sacrifice that Jesus paid on the cross at Calvary. When we murmur and complain, bring us 
back, Lord God, to that moment when he died in our place, when he was whipped for us and our sin. And remind us, Lord God, how he has victory over the grave, how he rose and is alive and is standing by your side, petitioning on our behalf, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. I cannot live a moment, a second, Lord God. I can't breathe without him. Thank you for sending him to us. Father God, you knew it would be hard sometimes. Father God, you understood that we would fall and we would need reassurance that our faith is not ill-placed. Father God, that our faith is sound. Our faith is sure. Thank you, Father God. That's all I can say is thank you. Thank you for those, Lord God, who would pick up their cross and follow you this day and who would take the reins of delivering your word to this world, to all the generations yet to come. Father God, prepare us for that moment when we meet you because this is all that life is about. Once we become saved and take on the salvation of Jesus Christ, we are in preparation mode to come before you, to be spotless, to receive our just reward. Father God, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive all that you would have for us in this life and in the next. Of all things, Father God, I ask that you remind us to forever be humble. Oh God, help us, Father God, when we become lofty, full of ourselves, arrogant, God forbid, prideful. Help us, Father God, to always remember to be humble. No matter what blessings you would bestow upon us as our just reward in this life, remind us to remain Humble. Somebody need to hear that. Humble yourself before God right now. That situation that you're going through, that you just can't get out of, is due to you not humbling yourself before God. That situation that you are in, based off of decisions you know you should not have made because you wouldn't humble yourself before God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. You trust in what you see with your eyes more than what you know in your spirit. Sounds like an oxymoron, but it is true. Somebody, somebody, and it ain't just one. Somebody gonna hear this, somebody listening right now. Yeah, you know, it's you. You've got God on your back. You can't even see him. You got him on your back and you pull him in front of you when you need him. Mm. Instead of following after the example, you following after what the world say. You want them fake believers, you faking it because you want what the world offering, all the things of the world. Pride of life. But you don't want to miss out in case that trumpet sound you're lukewarm. you neither whole, cold nor hot. And if you don't change right now, what you're going through is going to get worse. God is saying today, hear my plea. Because tomorrow is judgment. Jesus. Somebody had to tell me that. That scared the daylights out of me. God said, I've given you this the last time I'm warning you. This, this message was for you. 
I had her come on here for you. This message is for you. There's a couple of y'all. This message is for you. God said, this is it. I've drawn the line in the sand. Tomorrow is judgment. I'm not talking about a couple hours from now tomorrow, but judgment is here. If you don't change right now, if you don't humble yourself before God, God say judgment. That's what's next for you. Mm. Bible says that, you know, he will visit the iniquities of the father on the third and fourth generation. So it ain't even just about you. It's about your seed. Well, some of y'all be like, well, I don't have any kids. How could it be my seed? We have physical and we have spiritual. Meaning physically, you may not be a child. You may not have children. Spiritually, you have sown into the lives of children. Spiritually, you have filled them with lukewarm doctrine, which they gonna feed into somebody else. And they will eventually have children. Remember covenant? Somebody made covenant in your family. You're making covenant that just don't affect you. Because today was all about spiritual things. And just like in the physical, until a covenant agreement, a contract is broken, it runs its course. So does it in the spiritual. Humble yourself. Somebody you waiting on a phone call, waiting on a report. Father God is saying that all is well. All is well. Be at peace, all is well. Some of y'all right now, you don't know what to do next. Well, I said it before, Father God is saying fast. Go on a fast. When you got decisions in your life to make and you don't know what to do, go on a fast. Seek God for his will for your life. Go on a fast. Some of y'all in relationships and you're wondering if this is the right one. Did you ask? Father God is like, did you ask me? Or you came and you told me. You came and told me. And I was like, all right. Maybe you should come and ask me. And I will share with you my will for your life regarding this relationship. I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm not saying it's going to be good. But that's what God is saying. Because you need to understand the covenant you're about to make through this relationship. Because you're not just covenanting with him or her, but you're making a covenant with their family and their bloodline. Some of y'all, you're just hot in the wrong place. Yeah, it's better to marry than to burn. But can you not sit down for 30 days Father God is saying, can you not sit somewhere for 30 days and come before me? Get in my presence for 30 days. Talk to me for 30 days without making any future plans about this relationship. Let me talk to you. Let me let you know in on the deep, dark secrets that you need to know. Can you not give me 30 days? You willing to give this person a lifetime? All I'm asking for is 30 days. Mm. (sighs) 
somebody. Mm, there you go again. This suicide spirit keep coming up. It keep coming up, keep coming up. But I thank God that he has allowed the means to address it. Somebody's ready to just chuck it all in. They just, they done. They done made up in their mind, this is it. This is the last day. They're gonna party like it's 1999 and tomorrow, if it come, it come. If it don't, it don't. Somebody getting ready to just throw it all away. Do you understand what you're throwing away? You're throwing away purpose. Do you not understand you're going through all of this because the enemy wants you to throw away your purpose? Some, some of you who have this suicide spirit all around you, you're so caught up and worried about family and friends and society versus being concerned with God and the will he has for your life, the purpose he has for your life. Oh my God, I feel like I touched something. You're sitting in a dark room. Outside your room is a narrow hallway. And I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. It's like your back is up against a wall, physically and spiritually. You had gifts from a young child. You had purpose from a young child. And the enemy has fought you all your life. And you put on a facade for family and friends and society but yet you struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts. But there's always been a way out, but you were so worried about what people gonna think that when your help came, you turned a blind eye to it. God is saying right now, I'm sending you another help. I'm sending you another helper. I'm sending you another way out. Come to me, reach out to me. Your family, your, your family ain't about God. So to you, yeah, what, what, what you about to do to get free, they gonna look at you like, what happened to you? Cause God is the last thing they thinking about. And you so worried about what they gonna say. Look here, God say, I will provide for you. If you trust in me, I will provide food, shelter, finances. Jesus. If you do what I say, trust me. I will even shut their mouths against you. When they come up against you and, and, and say you crazy and all that, God said, I'm going to shut their mouths if you just trust me. Because the destiny in you that he has placed from before you were born, from childhood, it started to develop. That destiny, so many are dependent on that for their freedom, for their salvation. God's like, trust me. That's why the enemy is coming at you left, right, and center from every angle. But God say, trust me, I am sending someone to help you. You're going to know them. When you look at their face, you're going to see bright light. Spiritually, you're going to see a bright light on them. You can't even describe it. You can't explain it. They're going to walk into your world unscathed. They're going to walk into your world unfazed, unjudgmental. They're going to walk into your world and reach out to you, but you got to take their hand. 
You got to take the offer that is presented to you when it is presented to you. Forget who's watching. Forget what anybody tried to say. Remember, God said, I'm going to shut their mouths. Remember, we're talking about the whole armor of God. This, this person's got it on them. The shoes, they walk in and got peace all over it. So when they walk into the room, it's going to be peace. Peace going to walk in the room with them. Don't be afraid to trust in God. Don't do it. Let the sun rise and you see it again tomorrow. Don't let this be your last day. You have purpose. More, more than you can even imagine. The purpose that you have equals the hell that you've been going through. So imagine all the hell you've been going through. On the flip side, that's how much purpose you got. All the destruction that has been trying to come at you. On the flip side, all of the glory God's trying to burst out of you. That's your purpose. Somebody God already told you about this person in your life who you keep having hang around you. God keep telling you to cut that relationship. Some woman always in your face, giving you just enough encouragement. And when they see you get up a little bit, they stick you with something to verbally bring you down because they don't want you to get above them. They want you to just be just below them. They keep you around because they know you're tapped into God. They want what you got, but don't want to live right. They don't want to live holy. They live a little bit holy, but they mostly in the world and you know it, but you feel like you, you don't want to be alone. You don't want to be by yourself. You don't want to be outside the it crowd. So you allow this person to come around. God said, I told you to cut that relationship. I mean, it's like y'all night and day. Y'all act like night and day. It's amazing that you even could stand to be in their presence, but you, you feel like you need them to qualify you, to be accepted by the world. So you tether yourself to that person and slowly but surely she's just been poking holes in your spirit. She's just been pulling you down. Pray your spirit eyes is truly open so you could see them for, for who they really are. God said, don't be afraid. Shut it down. Cut, cut, cut that relationship. Cut it. They gonna be so shocked. They, they, they ain't gonna know what to do because they don't expect you to do it. They expect you to be their little puppy because they got you on a leash. Yeah, I see it. They got you on a leash. They pulling you by your neck. The minute you try to leave, they pull it a little bit and snap you back into place. Let the Holy Spirit become bold in you. You, ain't no, you don't serve no punk. Jesus ain't no punk. He ain't no weakling. Our God is all powerful. Cut it. Cut it, because all those things you asking God for ain't going to happen with them around. They ain't going to let it come to you. They're going to keep you right where they got you. You can't break free until you cut the cord that they got tied to you. Cut the relationship.
shut them down, cut them off, cold turkey. You don't owe them no explanation. You could block their phone number, unfriend them on social media, stop hanging out with them. When they come around and, and look, look, when they come around, when they finally get up the nerve to come and face you and ask you what's up, you just say, I don't need you in my life no more. I already understand what you're all about. God done showed me that you don't mean me no good. And I got to cut you. It's plain and simple. Look, they could be so shocked, like I said, that you that you had enough nerve to do that because they they feel they got you. No, I'm not saying they did witchcraft on you. But you came into agreement with them by what you allow them to do to you. You allow them to entangle you. You allow them to keep poking at your spirit, man, with those negative words. They ain't had to do no ritual on you. They just spoke and you received it. You didn't challenge them. From day one, you didn't challenge them because you wanted to be accepted. God's like, ain't nothing wrong with you the way you are. You don't need them to validate you. I already have validated you and given you purpose. There's a young man. There's a young man. Who is, who's at a crossroad, he's got a decision to make. Hmm. He's got a decision to make. Father God is saying, I need you, yeah, I need you too to, to come to me alone. I need you to separate from every one who has been whispering in your ear, giving you all this advice, you listening to everybody and anybody. I need you to come to me. Ask me. Let me give you the direction on how to make this decision. It's a very important decision. The thing is, they both look good. The one on the left or the one on the right, they both look good. But they both have very opposite end results. You can't go forward. You got two choices. You either go in left or you go in right. And the it's geographical. It's dealing with destination, physical destination. It's a physical decision you have to make. It's a geographical decision you have to make, whether to go left or to go right. You can't go forward and you can't go back. It's like you literally at a crossroad, driving a truck, you know, you're on the street somewhere and you come to a crossroad, a T-junction. You could only go to the left or to the right. Before you is bush, behind you, there's no way, it's a one-way road but you listen to any and everybody and the people you listen to are not of God. Some of them say they are, but they are not. And you even listening to people who flat out ain't of God and you know it, but they swear they got all this understanding, knowledge and wisdom because they got life experience. God's saying, come to me. Come to me. Let me direct you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, I love you. I pray that, again, this has been a blessing to someone. I pray that you would share this message on your feed. I know it's longer than I expected, but there are so many things that God wanted to be said, so many words of encouragement that he has asked to be revealed because people are crying out they want answers. They want help. Remember your assignment today is to touch somebody positively today. Just, just, just let God's light shine to you. Encourage someone today. Lift them up. It doesn't take much. 
You just don't know what people are going through. Don't worry about the smiles you see on their faces. People are hurting. People are hurting in places that they're too ashamed to even confess to someone else. So they hurt in private. They hurt in secret. But God sees all. God knows all. God says, I am here. I have sent you instruction. Follow the instruction God has sent. Armor up. Put on the whole armor of God every day. Every day. When you wake up, before you go to bed, before you encounter anybody you know is going to give you opposition spiritually, before you have to make any decisions, armor up. Get ready for war. Then fast and pray. For every decision, fast and pray. I'm not talking what to eat. I'm not talking all that foolishness. Don't get silly. I'm talking about real life-changing decisions. Decisions pertaining to family, to your career, to where you're going to live. Okay? Real life decisions. Decisions that are going to impact not only you, but generations to come. Those decisions you armor up, go before God in prayer and fasting and receive instruction. And whatever you do, follow the instruction. No good going to God to get instruction and then don't do it. Only to have to come back to him sometime later, stuck in the same position. Look at all the time you wasted. You Often we are our own worst enemy. Ain't nobody got to do nothing to us because we're doing it all to ourselves because we don't want to follow instruction. Follow instruction, people of God. I love you. I pray that I pray that this evening be a great one for you, that this weekend be one full of revelation. I pray that the peace of God be upon you.